Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we'll be doing a public evaluation of F-Secure Total. For those of you that are not familiar, F-Secure is a leading cybersecurity company from Finland, and this is their premier security suite for Windows. So we have F-Secure Safe, which is the internet security application, and then we have F-Secure ID Protection, this is kind of both a credential manager as well as a data breach check. And then we have Freedom, which is the VPN solution. All of these come within the umbrella of F-Secure Total, so you get them together. We're going to go over F-Secure Safe, check out how good it is at protecting the system. As usual, we're going to put it to the test against a host of malware that we will have on a network location and automate the execution of using our tool Malex. Now, there are a couple of different components that'll come into play here. Obviously, there's the real-time fall guard, but F-Secure also has DeepGuard, which is a behavior blocker, which also queries into their cloud. We have a thousand samples in our shared location. We're going to go through them with Malex and see how the stacks up. So without further ado, let the testing begin. All right, the test is now complete and we've landed at a proactive detection of 99.9%. Wow, that's as close as you can get to 100. So I'm just gonna mute the audio for a second just so we get respite from all these alerts. There was only one sample missed, but I believe even that was not a total miss because I saw the alert pop up and there was an error message, so I believe it was just blocked after the execution process. And since we measure proactive detection, anything that's executed essentially counts as a miss. If we take a look at the monitoring, as we can see, the only things that the application was able to access were the font cache, some system resources, but was terminated soon after. Let's take a look at this app data location. It's just a Python directory, so there's nothing really interesting to see here. Pretty much a clean sheet in this part of the test. So we're going to go ahead and end this and move on. In the next part of the test, we're going to take a look at protection against ransomware, and we're going to use some of the most infamous samples from the last five years, threats like WannaCry, Petya, the recent attack against Cyberpunk, and we're going to see how the behavior blocker itself functions and also go over ID protection, since that is something F-Secure asked us to look at. So the general UI has actually been revamped very recently. As you can see, everything is on the home screen. And the settings are still very basic, so it's not exactly built with the power user in mind. You can turn on and off basic components, you can see blocked applications, but beyond that, there's really not a lot you can customize here. I like the theme. It's almost Windows 11 ready as it is. Now let's take a look at ID protection. This is your vault where you can store all your passwords. You can add a new one quite easily. So you can add a password or a credit card. 
If you click on password, you're allowed to enter all the fields and you can generate one if you like. Very simple and easy to use. One thing to note, however, is that because this is an on-system application and not a browser extension, there is a little bit of loss of convenience there, especially when we've gotten to the point where even browsers and operating systems are having this kind of functionality. F-Secure does have a browser extension that allows you to autofill the passwords that you store here, but I don't think that functionality works in reverse. So adding your existing passwords may be a little bit of a pain. It also has this password analysis feature, which I really like. So it tells you how many weak passwords you have. And if we go back to our vault, you can even see character by character, and you can get an idea of how secure your password is. Now there's another function of this, which is monitoring, which checks your emails for presence and data breaches. Again, though, this is functionality that is now making its way into the operating system with things like iOS. F-Secure told me they're able to access and check for your credentials and data breaches. They're not yet public, whereas a lot of the other tools will just use open source data. But again, that's not really something we can test. So overall, my thoughts on this application are it's quite easy to use, as with the rest of F-Secure. But I do feel it's a bit late in coming and the implementation is still a bit clunky. And given that there are so many other alternatives, I'm a bit skeptical of how useful this feature is going to be. Also design decision wise, I mean, some of the functionality not being in this application makes me wonder why the whole thing wasn't an extension to begin with. And if it is an application on system anyway, why not just put it within the F-Secure safe UI or just have one UI for F-Secure total? So those are some of my thoughts. If you're a user and you actually use the ID protection module, let me know in the comments how you find it. But now we're going to get back to testing. Now moving on, we're going to go ahead and set up our ransomware test. So this is a simulation of a network-based attack, quite common with ransomware, and we're going to go ahead and see how F-Secure does. But before we do, we're going to turn off the signature component. We're going to turn off virus protection. So the idea here is we're trying to see how the behavior blocker fares on its own, especially since these are well-known threats. We want to see how it works, how it reacts, and also maybe the ransomware protection feature, which is kind of like controlled folder access for Windows. So everything looks good to me. We're going to go ahead and get testing again. Once again, it seems the test is progressing really fast. Everything is being blocked and uh, we're getting the prompts from DeepGuard. So that's good to know. All 65 of our ransomware samples were blocked proactively. Now it is possible based on the alert that these are more reactions from the online cloud component rather than the rules that are detecting behavior on the system. Could be a combination of those. But I really want to push this to the limit and uh, try to figure out how this component works. So we're going to go ahead and disable the internet for a moment and try to rerun the test. As you can see, there's no connection available, no internet access, and we're going to rerun. And interestingly, again, it seems like all of them are blocked but it is possible that there's some kind of caching going on. So what we're gonna do is we're going to restore to snapshot and redo the same test, but we're going to start with the internet disabled this time. So now everything looks good. We're gonna go ahead and rerun the test. Hmm, interesting. So now we have our first miss. Let's see if it's able to actually encrypt anything on the system. Interestingly, the second one is blocked, the third one is blocked. So some of these are still getting blocked by DeepGuard, but we have a block rate closer to 60% now, at least proactively. As you can see, DeepGuard is responding to some of these threats as they're executing, as they're performing their malicious behavior. As you can see, this detection is crypto ransom DeepGuard. So I'm guessing this is a behavioral blocker rule. Keep in mind the detection ratio here is not really the last indicator because DeepGuard can obviously respond to these as they're in memory. That's essentially what we're testing. How does it respond to the malicious behavior itself? So the real thing we're trying to see here is if our data gets encrypted by any of this ransomware. Once again, we have a detection from DeepGuard. 
and it seems at the end of the day the test was terminated either by deep guard or the ransomware we're gonna find out if we take a look at our documents hmm interestingly it looks like our documents were actually encrypted yep the data is indeed encrypted so i think we can conclude that with the internet disabled no caching DeepGuard is not able to fully protect the system against ransomware. It's good to see that at least it was able to block some of the threats with its behavioral rules. So there you have it. That's F-Secure total for you. Overall, I think the protection levels are great, especially given that this application does not produce as many false positives. It's very easy to use and there's no user decision making involved. It's fully automated. The application is also really light on the system resources, so there's that. There are more stringent zero-day defenses you could deploy, but then again, more false positives and alerts, so I think F-Secure hits a really good balance for a lot of users. At the same time though, in one of the scenarios, our documents did get encrypted, so there's definitely room for improvement with the protection features. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Please like and share the video if you enjoyed it. Feel free to get in touch at thepcsecuritychannel.com. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure. And hey, join our Discord, link in the description.